Good morning, Sojourn supporters, Kingdom partners, wherever you find yourself today. I just want to come to you and give you a brief update on what the month of April has looked like for us. It is hard to believe that we are already finished with four months of 2021. I think we're all still kind of reeling from 2020. And depending on where you are in the country, you're still feeling uh, some extreme effects of the pandemic. In some areas, it feels like things have kind of gone back to uh, normal. Uh, for us here in Portland, it's been kind of a, a mixed bag. We are probably one of the strictest, most conservative areas as far as our response to the pandemic, even at this present moment. Uh, I'm not saying that's good or bad. That's just kind of where we are, and I've got no control over that. Uh, for example, we just moved back into an extreme risk category for our county, which means as of this recording, we can no longer sit inside restaurants. Uh, we can no longer sit inside coffee shops, which if you know me, I love going to coffee shops. That's where I meet people. That is uh, most often times more is my office, although in, in my garage office at the moment. And so that means for at least the next three weeks, we will not be able to do those things. But in spite of that, we are trusting that God is still moving and working here in our midst in the city of Portland. And so for April, uh, as you all know, we started April with Easter. And so we had the a Good Friday service. It was our first time doing a Good Friday service. We did it with two other churches and just had a beautiful evening where we came together to remember uh, what Christ did on the cross. And then that led us into Easter weekend where the weather was beautiful. And so we had an outdoor gathering. We had a mix of some of our, our regular church people there. And then we actually had a couple people who don't know Jesus, which is always what you hope. And they were able to hear the gospel message proclaimed. And I am very excited to report to you that we had one person give their life to Christ. And that person happens to live in my house under my roof, my oldest son, Elliot. Uh, he was actually reading Romans 10, 9 and 10 that week and happened to be what I was preaching on that Sunday. And he came to us that night and said, I want to confess with my mouth. I want to believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he did what he said that he did and that he rose again from the dead. And so we were able to walk him through that and see him pray to receive Jesus as his Lord and Savior of his life. We are planning a baptism this summer. We're waiting until the weather's a little bit warmer. We can do hopefully an outside baptism party. And then we're also praying that some of our other people of peace will respond in salvation and that, that Elliot won't be the only one getting baptized that weekend. Uh, in our gospel community, we've gone through The Reason for God. If you've never read the book, The Reason for God, stop what you're doing, pause the video, go order that book. It's been very influential in my life, written by Dr. Tim Keller. And they, about 10 years ago, came out with a video series. And so we went through this video series. It's as relevant today as it was 10 years ago. And so we spent the last six to eight weeks going through that as a gospel community, having some really uh, tough and challenging conversations, but just also some ones that are really helping uh, equip us further and how it is that we engage with people here in our city and our culture. And so we were able to wrap that up this month. As far as outreach, uh, we had our main focus this month was working with a group called Every Child. Every Child works with the uh, Department of Human Services in our city with foster care system and foster families. They always need uh, different supplies uh, and they always need more diapers and more wipes because a lot of these are, are babies and toddlers. And so we did a diapers and wipes drive, invited our community to participate in that with us. And I've got a huge box here in my garage that I'm going to be taking over there later this day and, and dropping off for them. On a personal note this month, uh, but, but it's mixed in with the church as well, as I took a trip to Houston just a couple weeks ago. Shout out to Beaumont's First Baptist. Got to visit with some of my uh, people there and also got to meet with some potential partners, uh, pastors, churches in the Houston metro. If you've ever been to Houston, it's really spread out and sprawls a lot. And so I did a lot of driving, ate a lot of barbecue, at least their version of barbecue, not the North Carolinian version that I grew up with. And uh, just had some really life-giving meetings and only time will tell for sure. But if you're tuning in and you're in Houston, thank you for hosting me. Thank you for taking the time to, to meet with me and see if God is uh, partnering us together to further his work and his church here in the city of Portland. And then just this week, uh, they had a, the, the had a soul care retreat. And so really the idea is that a lot of times pastors don't care for their own lives. They care for others, but they don't care for themselves and they end up burning out or they end up having some kind of um, you know, moral failure. And so the idea is that we would learn how to rest and ultimately rest in Jesus and take care of our ourselves. And so our entire family went down to Cannon Beach. The Oregon coast, if you've ever been, is magnificent. The weather was beautiful. 
And we were just able to be reminded that in Christ we are his beloved and that he looks at us as his beloved. Regardless how big or small the church gets, regardless of what we would want to put our identity in, our identity is ultimately in Jesus. And so that was just life-giving. We're thankful for the opportunities to take advantage of doing things like that. And we're thankful to be partnered with a group up here in the Northwest who cares about us also caring for ourselves and not just caring for those under our care. Uh, upcoming tomorrow is May 1st. And so uh, I'm going to give you a couple ways you can be praying and just a couple of things that are coming up on our calendar. The first is I will actually be taking a trip to North Carolina uh, May 12th through the 17th. May 12th through the 17th. I'll spend part of that time in the Charlotte area in Iredo County. I'll actually be at Western Avenue, our sending church on Wednesday, May 12th. I will be speaking that evening, kind of giving an update on what just things have looked like over the last year and a half with the pandemic in the city of Portland, where we are as a church plant and how it is you can further partner with us. And then I'll, you know, be some time for Q&A. So please, if you are in Iredell County, whether you're part of Western Avenue or not, make it a priority to be there. I think they meet around 630 and uh, I believe it's probably in their fellowship hall. And then I'll also be there on Sunday, May 16th. I'm not speaking, but I believe I'll be on stage. I'll be hanging around. Maybe I'll speak in a Sunday school class or something along those lines. But um, I'll also be in the Raleigh-Durham area during those dates. And so if you're in the Raleigh-Durham area or the Charlotte Metro and you'd be interested in meeting, please let me know. The whole purpose is to meet with people, have some face time, and uh, just to be able to update on what God is doing here in Portland. Uh, you can be praying with us for the summer. So we're not quite there, but we're only about weeks away from summer uh, really, really moving in. And we've got three summer mission teams. Uh, which is scaled back from what it used to be. But last year we had none with the pandemic. And so once again, we don't know what that's going to look like. And so we're asking these teams to come in with the most flexible people because we just don't know how, how things will be. But we know there's always things that we can do. We can always prayer walk around the city. We can always do trash cleanup. We can always serve and love people in, in maybe unique and creative ways. And so be praying for those teams, be praying for those trips that will happen this summer. And then we also have five summer interns who will be coming to work alongside of us. These are all college students or recent college graduates, uh, happen to all be in the state of Texas. And so they'll be coming here to work alongside of us. And we're excited to see what God's going to do in their life. We're calling this the Portland Immersion Experience, where they're going to get immersed in an urban context, immersed with a church plant culture, and to see how God equips them and shapes them and molds them for the future. Whether they move to a city like Portland or whether they, they move back to where they grew up, that God will use this time in their lives to further help them see themselves as disciplers uh, and disciple makers who go and make disciples. Um, a couple other areas you'll be praying is, we've asked you this many, many months, we're, we're praying for more laborers in general, but specifically within that, we're praying for a co-leader, someone who can come alongside of me that can, can lead in different areas. Uh, ideally, someone who's gifted in ways that I'm not gifted in. And, and, and I'm gifted in other areas that they're not gifted in. And so be praying for that with us. Uh, we've been praying for someone who can lead us in worship through song. And so uh, continue to pray for that. I've had a couple conversations recently. There's one individual specifically here is already here locally. He's praying through what this might look like. And we don't, you know, ultimately want him to go where God wants him to go. And so if, God, if this be the person that God would have for us, pray that this would be God's will and that be made very clear to this individual uh, and th that'll be able to report to you probably at the end of May. I can let you know uh, what that individual decided. And um, either way, this summer, one of our interns actually leads worship. And so we're going to have that, um, that need met at least for a couple of months during the summer. But we are praying for someone who long-term could come and not only be a worship leader, but that'd be one of the areas that they are gifted in that they can lead us in as a church. Uh, and the last thing is pray for our people of peace. We feel like in our lives right now, we have more people of peace. Uh, people of receptivity, people who are open to the gospel than we've ever had in the time that we have lived here. And so, you know, we, we pray for things like worship leaders and we pray for different events and outreach that we're going to do, but ultimately we want to see these people embrace Jesus. You know, this is the reason that we moved to the city of Portland. We didn't come here just to do events. We didn't come here just to do worship services. We came here so that we could see disciples made, that we want to see people go from death to life to follow Jesus and then to be discipled. And they would go and disciple others in their network of friends and influence. And so be praying for these people that they would embrace Jesus and that we would be bold and one proclaiming the gospel, that we would be bold and invite them to respond to the gospel message. 
And so, Sojourn supporters, thank you so much, as always, for your ongoing support. Thank you for your, your prayers, and thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for those of you who send cards, and some of you, thank you for sending gift cards. And for those of you who support us financially, this is a, a team effort. You know, I look at this as really the body of Christ, and we're all kind of fitting a different need that, that, that my family was physically called out and called to come to the city of Portland. And some of you are called to stay back where you are, but you're praying and interceding. And, and some of you... I have the means financially to give and to help. So we all work together. So let me just at the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing some of you when I'm in North Carolina for those of our support base that are there. And for those of you who aren't, I look forward to hopefully seeing you out here maybe this summer or, or maybe in the coming months as we continue on in this journey of learning what it means to follow Jesus and follow him faithfully in the city of Portland and inviting others to do the same. Thank you all so much. Have a good rest of the day. I look forward to updating you next month.